Hey guys and welcome back to G's Autos. Thank you so much for tuning in. Alrighty, as we move closer to supercharging the mighty Toyota Starlet, uh, the next step in the process was replacing the big clunky factory battery uh, in the engine bay with a nice small compact Lithium Max battery. Uh, the installation of the battery is in the boot of the car. Uh, the main reasons for doing this swap is because I wanted to make more room in the engine bay uh, moving closer to supercharging just so we've got more room for any bits and pieces that we might need. Um, the other reason is uh, with the isolated switch is that I, the car might be going into storage for extended lengths of time. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure I've got an isolation switch there to uh, protect the battery. And um, look, in case of any emergency situation, um, the electrical system can be isolated, which is um, just a good thing to have. Anyway, guys, enough out of me. I hope you liked this video. If you enjoyed, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content as we move closer to uh, supercharging the Starlet, please hit the subscribe button. Anyway, guys, thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next one. All right, guys, the next upgrade for the Starlet is to replace this original battery. Now, this battery here weighs 10.3 kilos. So the plan is to replace that now with a Lithium Max lithium battery. Now here's the battery in question. So this is made by Lithium Max. It's a lithium battery, it's lightweight. Um, as I mentioned, the factory spec battery up front is 10.3 kilos. This only weighs two kilos. Now the benefits of this battery is that it's, it's designed from the ground up for automotive use. So it's not some camping battery that we found and we decided to stick it in the car. No, that is not it. Now I've also purchased the cradle the bracket to go with it so um, obviously that will go inside that now obviously you'd want to try and mount it over this side to counter weight against the the weight of the driver but look this is two kilos I'm not gonna go um, worry about stuff like that just yet so what we're planning on doing is mounting the battery around that location there uh, it's nice and easy to get to uh, I don't want it in, in those areas there because I don't want to be reaching over to there or there trying to get to it from here or from the or from the passenger or driver's door. Here it's nice and easy to access. So Tim's going to start making up some cables for this and um, yeah we'll take a look at the next step. Now there's one feature on these batteries that I really do like and that is the button there so I can see how many volts are in the battery exactly. So that's just uh, another little quality there for these batteries, which is really, really good. Anyway, let's go check out and see how Tim's doing with the uh, with the wiring. Okay, so even though the battery's being relocated to the boot area, a set of contacts will remain where the original battery was. So one will be positioned there, and one will be positioned roughly there. Now that's because if we still need to jump start the car for whatever reason, we've still got access to a set of jumping points in the engine bay. So for mounting the battery, Justin's just measuring up the corner down there. So because of all these crumple zones and the way it's shaped in the back here, Justin's going to make a flat plate for that bracket to sit on. So that'll securely mount that, um, that battery down. You know how you drill a triangular hole? A triangular hole, tell you, me. You let me add it with the drill. Excellent. That's, uh, that's, I can normally drill, drill a triangle for you. I do ovals. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've been known to do ovals. Um, that's just in case you need to get the bolt at a certain angle. You can then that's right. The that's right. You can cross thread it exactly how you need it. It's made just Loctite. You don't need any Loctite once you cross it. All right. 
right, so Tim has finished mounting the two contacts. They're now secured in, both of them, and he started running some cable through. We're just working out um, the placement of the uh, switch. All right, so we've decided to run the uh, battery isolator switch on the back part of the uh, center console. So at the moment, Tim's just running some cable underneath the console, so it'll reach the, that switch. We'll peak lamp it all along there so it doesn't flap around because that's um, quite a few amps. So it'll be a really good fire when it happens. Excellent. Yeah, so we will, um, yeah, we'll make sure of that. And then we'll run our alt motor wire and yeah, Justin will finish the tray and it'll be good to go. Happy days. This is our alt motor wire. So that one's the alternator and that one you've got to run back to the switch, is that correct? To the cold side of the switch. Okay. Um, once an engine's running, yep. the battery just works the storage device. Uh, the alternator actually powers everything in the car. Yep. So what we need to do from there is when you turn the kill switch off when it's in the power side of our wiring, the alternator will continue the engine running. So that's bad news for everyone involved. Yep. Uh, so what we need to do is take the lead that fits into the alternator fuse and run it to the cold side of our kill switch. And that's it. Um, and then it will turn on and off when we turn the car on and off. Now, Thank you. That is so nice. Just put a chamfer on the top. That's be fairly firm, that plastic too, I'd say. It's um it is a little bit, yeah. It's up there. There we go. That is so nice. We'll now put some bolts through it. Yep. Uh, and that'll fix our problems. There you go. How's that look? Oh, very neat. Nice. Put two button head no, screws on the side. Looks like it's meant to be there. Yep. Ejecto Cedo cars. Excellent. <laughs> I should be using the scissors for this. Doesn't look like it to me. No, no, that's not crooked at all if you look at it like that. Yeah, if you're on a lean. Yeah, if you're only wearing one shoe, it's fine. Do you think if a pregnant woman goes swimming, that makes her a submarine? Quite possibly, yeah. These are the things I have to worry about while I wait for heat shrink to go down. Well, that is true, yeah. What, other people have shower thoughts, but... You have heat shrink thoughts. I have heat shrink thoughts, yeah.
it's a Justin's gone through and he's just cleaned up the um, this old sound deadening material because because uh, nut certs are going in you don't want to leave this material under the nut cert because it will then wear thin and then create movement and oh, I don't want that and he doesn't want that with a with a battery bracket so all this has just been cleaned up nut certs will go in there and that's what the bracket will um, drill into Alright, so the cable's been run through from the engine bay. It's all been clamped down nicely. Alright, so the battery bracket is all done. Very nice. So that's all. There's nut certs underneath all of these in the floor pan. Raised edges, nut certs put on the outside for the um, other part of the bracket which will bolt straight down and some foam padding will go underneath there and probably along strips there just to stop any vibration and any dramas that may cause. Is that to help the lithium fire take hold? That's right, yeah, so wooshka. <laughs> Alright, so Tim's finished putting the uh, connectors onto the two cables going to the battery and just feeding them back through to the isolation switch which he's just fitting those now. And pretty much after that, Tim, it's all, all good? I hope so. We'll, um, yeah, terminate the earth, um, hook it all up and see what it does. Hopefully it makes noise like it gets it. Excellent. Now good. the earth, we're just going to use one of these existing holes, yeah. uh, screw holes from the seats. All the seat belts and that have been taken out. Just did that before and, yeah, looking good. And um, that last cable and the earth and we are sweet. All right, one thing to keep in mind, because these cables here are coming through this part of the center console this needs to sit flat so a cut will need to be made just in there so these cables can feed through so this doesn't sit upwards all right so we're going to take a look it's been about a month since the work's been done it's been a crazy month so let's pop the hood and take a look car is filthy far out Alright, so we have made so much room in the engine bay. Absolutely fantastic. So there's our jump points. A couple of terminals there for the positives. And one there for all the earths. Now, with this uh, alternator on the 4 EFE in the Starlet, it actually, uh, the alternator was running its own um, uh, fuse into the main box there so we're yet to put one in one will be going back in and some additional protection for the ECU as well in regards to um, power and the cobwebs and everything all over it car's been sitting around for a little bit in the last month but anyway let's take a look in the back and uh, see how it all turned out all right there we have it batteries all installed there's my shadow batteries all installed Now the next job on the list here is to get a false floor put in the back. I've received a quote to get all that done. So all this is going to be covered up with a false floor before all the stereo uh, speakers get put in. So 
I'll need to actually, I want to take these off, clean them up. Uh, the other one I've got already, that's already been removed as you know. And then uh, they'll go back in and then all these, all the seat belts need to come out. I need to fill some of these bolt holes down here. Uh, but once all that done, when that's all done, these I'll take these out as well. <clears throat> Pardon me, but once all that's done, uh, the false floor can go in and that'll finish the back end off off nicely. So I'm uh, really happy about that. All right, so there, that's with the switch in. So it's nice and neat, easy to, easy to get to, uh, whether it's me driving or the passenger, in case that uh, power does need to be turned off. As you can see, there's a few spiders webs just there. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a red back running around in here somewhere. Um, a couple of minor, minor adjustments to the cables, possibly underneath. As you can see, that's just sitting on a, on a lean this way a little bit. Uh, so just a minor adjustment there. Let's take a look in the back. So when the false floor goes in, a little uh, lid will need to go in for the um, to get to the fuel pump. Uh, and another lid will need to go in for the uh, so we can get to the battery when need be and some just minor adjustments just to clamp that little bit of cable down all that will get done uh, the wiring has already been done for the upgraded Walro um, 255 fuel pump so that's already done uh, fuel pump yet to go in uh, so yeah guys so if you like this video give it a thumbs up sorry guys uh, yeah, so give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content on the Starlet being supercharged, my messy floor. And uh, hit that subscribe button and um, more content to come. Thanks, guys.